Hi, I'm Kevin Jost with Automotive Engineering here at the SAE 2012 World Congress, talking to Monty Cleves, uh, founder of Pinnacle Engine. Uh, tell me about the unique features of your engine compared to the competition. So there have been opposed piston engines around the world since the 1890s, but almost all of those have been uh, two-stroke uh, direct injection, usually diesel engines. And uh, while they showed the efficiency and the simplicity of the concept, uh, they're not very appropriate for uh, modern small automotive in that uh, they have the diesel emissions challenge that's quite expensive for entry-level markets. Okay. And so for a small company that needs to um, get to market early, um, we needed a clean uh, basic starting block. And so we've come up with a concept that allows us to use the opposed piston technology and get its high efficiency, but make it a four-stroke. And so we can uh, meet cost targets in developing world um, uh, motorcycle applications to small car applications and meet emission standards that the diesels find very expensive to meet. Mm. What were the most significant challenges during development of the program? <laughs> So, <clears throat> probably the most uh, uh, challenging was convincing people that we were real serious engineers and we had real serious data behind what we're doing. Because it's an unusual concept and it's different enough from what people usually think about that it's um, seen as pretty well out there. But D Different we, in what way, for instance? Um, so, no cylinder head. The, uh, sleeve valve that we use to control airflow in and out of the engine is the cylinder wall itself and uh, nobody builds an engine like that. Nobody has built a sleeve valve of this type mm -hmm. uh, and into actual hardware before. Okay. And so there were sleeve valves in World War II but those uh, had a different operating uh, mechanism and uh, wouldn't meet emission standards these days so we had to come up with a revision that was compatible with uh, emission standards of today. And, uh, what were some of the other significant challenges other than convincing people that it was a valid concept? So because of that different valve, um, the uh, sealing forces to keep the gas pressure inside the uh, cylinder are quite a uh, concern for everybody. It doesn't have the same mechanisms, the same physics as the regular puppet valve, but uh, through uh, pretty reasonable engineering um, program and uh, development and evaluation, we've been able to show that we can match the poppet valve's sealing capability with uh, very high gas pressures so that we are able to maintain the high efficiency that we're expecting. Okay. Um, in getting this engine, in particular this engine, if you could talk a little bit about this project and what it's going to take to actually make it to production. So, uh, as uh, any sort of prudent uh, partner might uh, request, uh, the highest priority for our partner is fuel efficiency. And so they were after an initial prototype that just validated the fuel efficiency. And then as part of the program, we designed in a, uh, a REV2 that would then take that high efficiency concept and design for cost. So we're moderately close with cost. We're making our efficiencies out of this one. And so we have a, a REV2 design that'll be on the uh, back in the test cell later in the fall this year, and then it needs to that needs to go through all the uh, reliability testing, et cetera, before road testing and uh, customer feedback before it actually goes into the uh, dealer showrooms. So, about how long do you think that would be? Well, so know? our partner's original estimate were that uh, they'd be in the showroom about the end of next year. And we're on track with that program, so we're still optimistic that the end of 2013 we'll have uh, vehicles on the road. Okay. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Sure.